This is the training room in the south end zone at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. It's here where Gator football players go through the rehab to try to get back on the field after injuries, ranging from torn ACLs and sprained ankles to Achilles tendons and even a pulled hamstring. It's always a challenge for an athlete to get back to his or her best after a significant injury. But perhaps no Gator athlete ever had to overcome more to get back on the field than Florida linebacker Neron Ball. Neron Ball was your typical sophomore going through spring practice in February of 2011 when he suddenly didn't feel right. From the beginning, it was a normal day. Like I got up and went to, went to like classes and then I went to practice and then went through practice. As practice went on, like I just started feeling kind of weird, you know. Ball sought help from team trainer Anthony Pass, who tried to figure out why he was having such debilitating head pain. Yeah, I think it was scary because during the, the workout that we had on the practice field that day, Neron participated in that and then had the acute episode of this injury when it actually, the, the AVM burst. And his symptoms when he came to me just didn't match up. You know, he was saying how he felt and it wasn't, uh, you know, like you said, I'm used to seeing uh, sprained ankles, a strained muscle, something like that. I wasn't used to someone can't, coming up to me and saying, you know, I feel something inside my head just doesn't feel right. I went home and you know, I tried to go to sleep, but I couldn't. And then I remember uh, my trainer calling me and checking up on me. And he called me, I told him, I told him I wasn't feeling well. Actually, my roommate told him because he answered the phone. And then, so they walked me downstairs because he told me he was on his way. And then we went to the ER and that's when they diagnosed the AVM. That diagnosis of AVM, arteriovenous malformation, came from Shan specialist, Dr. William Friedman. So Neron presented with uh, the worst headache of his life. And neurosurgeons know that that frequently indicates that there's been some bleeding in the brain. A CAT scan showed indeed there was some bleeding and additional testing showed that the bleeding came from a small tangle of abnormal blood vessels. We call that an arteriovenous malformation. The first thing I did was research. Uh, you know, I, I think I, you know, I asked the question multiple times to the doctor when he was on the phone with me. He was, what is it again? Can you explain exactly what that is? How do you spell that? Um, you know, any other athletes have had this, you know, did a lot of um, background. Uh, checking and then I had to do my own research. Uh, so it was one of uh, learning, but also one of, you know, you need to hurry up and find out what this is so you can then explain it to Neron and his family so they feel comfortable as well. My first thought was, <laughs> am I going to live? That's hard to think, to think a blood vessel pops in your head and blood gets in your brain, like, that's out of the regular imagination. And to be told that, it's just very scary, it's just a scary feeling to, you don't know if you're gonna live or you don't know what's going on. The diagnosis was quickly relayed to Neron's family, specifically his sister Natalie and brother-in-law, Derry Myricks. Coach Muschamp called and, uh, and he, he did a good job because he, he, didn't, he didn't scare us with the phone call. He, he just said, look, first I want you to know that he's all right, he's okay. And then he started to explain the situation. And then he uh, put uh, the athletic trainer, uh, um, Anthony, uh, on the phone and uh, he explained the situation. And of course, we, we reacted. We immediately, uh, you know, got ourselves together, got his auntie, uh, my wife, uh, and uh, we all headed down to uh, just kind of assess the situation and see what was going on. Our family is no stranger to tragedy, so immediately I thought the worst. And so he wouldn't give me any information. You know, he said, we just got to go. And so we got up and we all got dressed and as we were driving down, I finally asked him uh, what was going on and he gave me the extent, extent of what was going on with Neron. They immediately headed south, not knowing exactly how seriously ill Neron really was. It was just scary, just thinking, you know, do I have to make a tough call when I get to Shan's hospital? Um, am I gonna have to think about funeral arrangements? It was very, very difficult. But I was trying to stay calm for my kids and my um, aunt, it was just scary. We were always scared of the headaches, um, you know, every headache, uh, you know, you know, made you wonder. Um, but once he had the procedure, it was just a, almost a, a sit and wait and wait for him to adjust, you know. Uh, uh, he would call sometimes, uh, you know, frustrated and worried, 
Um, but for the most part, like I said, the, the coaching staff and the people down here did a good job of, of helping him out, helping him through it, and giving, it, giving him the time he need um, to, um, to, to get better. And the process of getting better began with a procedure called radio surgery. We basically uh, attach a metal ring uh, to the skull using uh, Novocaine anesthesia. We uh, do a CAT scan that goes into a computer. We plan how to shoot hundreds of very small beams of radiation right at the malformation. Neuron was connected to the machine for doing that treatment. The radiation itself takes about 30 minutes. The ring comes off and you go home. The surgery was successful, and Neron Ball was on his way back to full health, but he was still a long way from returning to the football field. In part two of our look at this remarkable story, Neron gets a clean bill of health and rejoins his teammates. Neron Ball had made it through a life-threatening situation, and in the spring of 2011, he began a year-long process of trying to get back to football. Being away from the game wasn't easy. It was very hard. I mean, I can't even really like. It was it was so hard. I just I just didn't really want to like kind of think about it. I wanted I was really just thinking about my health and thinking about like my situation. I wanted to get healthy first. I know Saturdays were horrible for him. I wasn't with him on Saturdays because it was with the team, but I know those were horrible for him. But, uh, you know, he's just, he, you look at him now, you don't even think about he missed a year of games, which is really great. Ball had to gradually ease into physical activity while watching his best friends going all out. It was a challenge for him to stay positive, but it was a challenge he was up to. And the run is, a, he's an upbeat guy, he always has a smile on his face. Um, he, he's, a, he's a man of faith. I think he's not a guy that really got too discouraged by it, and he handled it really well. He handled it amazingly. He, he handled it better than, than I handled it, to tell you the truth. First of all, Neron's just a great young man, you know, and he's been through an awful lot, not just with the, the injury, you know, the, the injury last year. Had some tough things happen in his life, some setbacks, and uh, so any, any time you're able to see something like that, it, it makes you feel good about where you are and what you're doing, and be able to coach guys like him, because he's such a wonderful young man. That positive attitude was braced by love and support from teammates, coaches and staff, as well as family. My family are loving. They're loving and supportive. I mean, I don't think I would be here without, without them, you know? And every situation that I go through, it seems like they're there. They're there to support me. They're there to give me advice and things of that nature. You know, family members and friends in our town, um, hometown of Jackson, and so people were calling him. The people um, in Gainesville were sending him flowers and cards and just uplifting his, his spirit throughout the year. Um, he took more classes. He stayed focused um, in class, and he just geared um, all his energy to work doing his schoolwork. And after a year, you know, we got the call that he would be able to play, which was great. Luckily, we had a great support system, and he's got a great family that helped him out and they were understanding, they understood what the doctor was saying, what we as a sports health, health staff was saying, um, and he really kind of came through really, really well. Neron couldn't practice, but he did his best to remain connected to the Gator team. Before he even got to the, to the field, what we talked about a lot was uh, getting in the film room, staying uh, connected, uh, learning the calls, and trying to, trying to learn as much as possible mentally. You know, what coaches always say, get mental reps. And then uh, once he got on the field, um, I think he was uh, he was a little disappointed at first about you know the speed in which he could translate what he knew he knew it in the book to what he had now, but he called one day and I think he had he had had it may have been um, just one of those um, walk through practices and uh, and uh, he had did just a good job at least he felt like pass rushing and uh, and doing the things that, that he used to do and uh, I, I could tell in his voice that he was a lot more at ease and uh, with the possibility of him coming back full time. Six months into it. We, we had a very protected and pro, uh, progressive uh, workout for him. So each day was a step forward. Uh, and once we were uh, satisfied with where he was physically, we actually you know, turned it up a notch and let him do uh, weightlifting and that type of stuff. Then one day, about a year after his radio surgery, Neron Ball got a green light to return to football. My trainer told me and then the doctor, the doctor called us and he just gave me more details and it was a very happy moment, very one of, one of the happiest moments of my life. 
He actually texted me and said, you know, I could play. And I, you know, I texted him back. I was like, great. Um, it was just good for him because his spirits were up. You could just see a different person compared to what he was the year before. You know, he was down and out. He would come home and just, he had a look. He, he doesn't talk much, so he had this sad look the whole time. So to just see him be so excited about playing football and getting back on the field was great. Last fall, there couldn't have been a single player in orange and blue that was more excited to run through the tunnel and take to Florida Field. Well, I don't think I can put it in the perfect words, but I think I could say it's super, super exciting because just the fact of knowing that I that I could have not played this game another 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 down, just knowing that just like makes me excited just to be just to be out there. I must admit, this year when he did that, even in, even before when he ran through the tunnel, when he got out there during training camp, it was it was pretty satisfying, and not not just for me, but for the kid, because you know here's a kid who, like I said, the whole time believed in what you said, really wanted to have as much information, and really whatever you asked him to do, he would do. That long road back made the experience all the more exciting. And it was obvious that Neron Ball truly appreciates the opportunity to play for the Florida Gators more than ever before. You, know, you, you can see it, you know, just how much he appreciates it, you know, how hard he goes in practice now. You know, he pretty much plays every play like it's his last, you know, because at one point, you know, it was almost taken away from him. You know, he's, you know, he even expressed that to us, you know, keep going, you know, you never know when, you know, it's going to be your last play, you know, so you got to play every play like that. So thankful for this opportunity. I try to take advantage of it as much as I can. I, I just can't explain how thankful I am. Neron Ball has two more years of eligibility, and the Gators are expecting big things from him in the future. You know, because of the, 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 the injury he had a year ago, uh, he didn't lift for about four to six months. So here's a guy that's going to get in our weight program after this season, and we're going to, we're going to make him live in the weight room for about six months. And so he's a guy that's going to continue to develop. He's got great flexibility. He's a very explosive athlete. Uh, he's a guy that can change direction. He's got a great initial quickness in the short area. So I think he's got a lot of a very promising career in front of him. Neron Ball has already written one of the greatest comeback stories in Gator football history. Now he can set about writing the next chapter in his life story this coming season. I'm Larry Vitell.